All right. It's time. Thank y'all for coming today. Oh, we got to wait for her to come back. But we'll just chit chat. Today is about projects you can do, small projects you can do. They're easy projects. Um, uh, some you can do in half hour, 45 minutes. Some you can do in a weekend. But there's nothing that you see here that should take longer than a weekend. And we're going to show you different kinds of things that you can do. Um, basically, you've either got one or two choices. You're going to use a lathe or you're not. Okay? You can make wonderful little projects uh, with the lathe. The lathe gives you a whole lot more little projects you can do, but you don't need one. There, there's other stuff you can do as far as little projects to go. However, a lathe is really, really going to broaden your horizons. Okay, first thing. What projects can you do from kits? Kits are easy. Well, in kits we have these types of things. One is, this is a, uh, a salt and a pepper mill. This is the box it comes in. So all you do is add the wood. This is one you're going to need to lathe for. But the nice part about this is salt goes this way, pepper goes this way. The easy project to do, you can do this project. Uh, the longest part of doing this project is letting the finish dry. It, it's fairly straightforward. You're going to drill a couple holes, but this is an easy one and little kits like this. If you don't have a lathe, then you're into stuff like this. This is a long grain cutting board. All the pieces of this are right there. So that's where this comes from, right there. And all you're doing with this is clamping and gluing it together. Cutting it, sanding it, put a nice little edge on it, and that is a very nice cutting board. You can do this in just a couple hours. It's easy to do. There's not a lot. And these make great cutting boards, trivet, all that good stuff. This is good kitchen stuff, easy to keep clean. This is about three quarters of an inch, a little bit less when they took it through the planer and planed it nice and flat to get rid of the glue marks. Um, this is something Woodcraft just came out with. This is a pizza cutter. I don't ever pastry you want cutter. And basically all this is is just a giant blade that's going to come down, and that's it. So, with this one, this is in the knife category. And what they've done with this, you're going to take a block of wood 16 inches long, okay? And they try to use it one and a half by one and a half. And then you're going to cut a groove right down the center of this. This groove is going to use a thin curved table saw blade. So it's three and three quarter inches and just happens to fit this perfectly. Now, you're going to have this block of wood. You're going to have a nice um, three and three quarter inch groove in it that's exactly three quarters of an inch deep. And then what you want to do is before you put this on, you're going to do all your sanding and finishing. Now, there's two little holes over here and two little holes over here. If the mood should strike you and you want to drill holes in this to put pins or screws in those little holes on each side, good luck to you. Because these are buried. And if you were to lay this on top and do everything we're doing, this is very hard to do. So what you'd have to do basically is make a sled that will support everything. And then while this is on the top held in place with double sided tape, you drill your holes through here and go all the way through. And then if you did everything right, they'll line up. But when you press this together, this is a press fit. It, there's not a whole lot of sliding in this. Okay. Right now, this blade is held on with nothing but friction. There is no glue. You can see how easily it moves. So if you try to line up those holes, you're in for a very frustrating afternoon. Now, we can't leave it with a friction fit because as soon as we expose this to water, when we clean it and the wood expands and contracts, this will fall out. 
and this is pretty sharp so if it would come across your toe that's that's a very bad thing so we're not going to pin it what can we do now think about what this does the only thing this does is this that's it it doesn't you don't chop vegetables with it all you do is i see it again so there's not a lot of stress on the handle. So we can hold this in place with some type of adhesive, okay? There's only two adhesives that we this. And once we do this, this is done, okay? The two adhesives we're looking at are an epoxy. This happens to be five minute barrel bond, this is a gel. But we want an epoxy. Epoxy will hold that with no problem. Or we want one of these little things. This is called e -X -X E6000. This is a silicon based glue. It sticks to everything. It sticks to metal, it sticks to wood, it sticks to ceramics, it sticks to plastic. The only thing it doesn't stick to is other silicon molds. Other than that, this sticks to anything. This is a great glue especially for anything we're going to use in the kitchen we want to clean. Why? Because this is flexible. Now when I say flexible, I'm not mean like a, a piece of this. You can, it'll uh, expand, it'll squeeze. So if the wood expands and contracts, this will take it. This won't pre put the pressure on what got in here. I make crystal goblets with wooden bases. And I order bunches of them, and they're beautiful crystal goblets. You can get different sizes, and there's a little stem on it that's that big. And that's what you drill down into your, your stem that you're turning. That will hold that goblet in there forever, but if the wood expands and contracts, that goes with it, and it doesn't put pressure on the crystal and crack it. Does a great job with this, too. Plus, if you use this, uh, what you're going to do is... Put some in the groove, put this down, get it in there nice and good. And then I come back and I put a little line here, little line here, little line here, little line here. Then you take it and run it. And now you just made that groove waterproof. So the water can't get in here underneath the handle and mess it up over time. Okay. So this is a really good tool to have in your small projects toolbox. Uh, it's called E6000. And it's a great little thing. Um, it does a wonderful job sticking anything to anything together with the exception of silicon. Okay? So, since we're in the kitchen, we've talked about those cutting boards. If you want to go wild and crazy, you can make one of these. This is a three-dimensional cutting board, end grain cutting board which is what the chefs really like, and grain cutting boards, okay? Now, to make this, you need a table saw, joiner, and a planer. Lots of clamps and glue. However, this shows you how a simple project could really start to look tremendous, okay? This is a whole weekend project because what you're gonna do is you're gonna take uh, a thin piece of wood that's a certain color, a thicker piece of wood that's another color, and a thin piece of wood that's the same color as the first one, and glue up that panel. And you're going to do it twice. You're going to have two of those big panels. Then you're going to take your table saw, you're going to set it to 30 degrees, and you're going to cut a whole bunch of strips out. Then you're going to take your table saw and cut it to, set it to 90 degrees, and everything that's like this, you're going to cut those so they're like this. And now you have the beginnings of these things. Now you chop them up, glue them back together, and this is what you get. But to make this work, you do need table saws and blunt joiners and planers because this is a tight fit. This is a demo type of fit, so the tolerances aren't as great as they could be, but it still look pretty. And unless you really looked at it hard, you'll never see that. So this is something that's capable in your shop if you have those basic tools. And this doesn't need a lathe. That one doesn't need a lathe. Um, yep. Mm -hmm. 
You can use a bandsaw or you can use a table saw. Most of what I do is a table saw, but they drop that to, to 30. Another one is a knife. And this knife is here. And when we talk about knife, you don't make this, you put the handle on. And there's all kinds of stuff that you can do for the handle. Now, the nice part about this is you can actually tailor this to somebody. I put handles on a lot of my wife's favorite kitchen knives that we've used for chopping and doing whatever, whatever magic she does in the kitchen. And I'll put a handle on and I'll hand it to her and she'll grab it and she'll say, no, I don't, it's too fat here, it's too something here, it's too, so I take it back, I mark out the areas, I go back to the shop, I take, uh, I can use an electric sander, I could use a rasp, I can use files, I can use hand sanding, but anyway, I'll start taking this wood down, I'll give it back to her and eventually I'm, she's going to grab and go, oh, this is perfect. I'm done, I put on a finish. Now, that's going to take longer because I'm having somebody try it, but basically, uh, with a knife, any type of knife, think of this type of shape, okay? When your hand goes here, now this one doesn't have it, so normally you have something here that's going to keep your hand from going forward, okay? So if you're punching into something and this is a ski ramp like this one is, if you're just going to go right on. So normally I put a little something here that the fingers can't go any further. And you're going to do the same back here for the back of the hand. There's two ways to hold a knife. One is this way. And everybody knows this way. So you can cut stuff up. You can, you know, make sandwiches. The other way is to have your fingers here. And now you can really do detailed work. If you're like the deer hunt and you're going to keep Deer, you've got you're holding the knife this way. If you're chopping up vegetables, you can do this. But there's two ways. So you want it to be comfortable here, and you want it to be comfortable here. Easily done with hand tools. You can do the whole thing with hand tools if you wanted to. Um, you can cut out the general shape with a coping saw. You can use a band saw, is what I use. You can use a scroll saw if you have that, and then just hit it. Start hitting with sandpaper, files, and rasps, and you can get this down. Now this has got pins. Unlike this, that's closed on this end, this is open. So we need pins in something like this, otherwise these handles are gonna slide all over the place. So that's why you use pins or screws. Do you have to? Can I use just epoxy to hold this in place? Yeah, I can, but if I'm gonna do that, I wanna make these handles much wider than normal and I'm gonna tape everything together with tape so they don't slide. And then when the epoxy is set, I can come back here and I can start shaping this. Don't worry about sanding on the blade. Uh, if you get a, uh, this sand right here is 180 grit, it gives you a nice satiny look. If I want it to high gloss, if I start sanding at 400 grit, this will start to be a mirror bright. 600 grit will be very mirror bright. So you can actually sand the metal and, more, and change the little contrast. So that's pretty much for a neat, oh, more kitchen stuff. Little scoopers. These are neat to make. They're not that hard. Again, this is all lathe work now, so you need a lathe for this stuff. But basically what you're doing with this is, this is in a lathe like this, and you're turning that first. So you're turning the ball at the end, and you're turning the handle. Then when you take it out, you you're going to make what's called a GM chuck. And a GM chuck is going to be so I can press this ball in there and it's kind of hold it in place. But I also cut a groove for this. Stick it in there and I just turn this out. Voila, I have a little scoop. This is a perfect jelly bean scoop. This was designed to go into those little uh, jelly bean jars, the ones that have all the different flavors in. Takes out a perfect scoop of jelly bean. This is a little scoop scoop. And here you see I can I cut this hole here with the Forstner bit. Now, obviously, this is prototype. You know, when I do it in the next time, I'll know not to uh, leave this so thick. But this is something you can do, and these are really neat to do, and they're not hard because this is again between centers. You do everything here. Um, but while this is still a block. You took your Forstner belt, you drilled your hole in here, and then took that off. And just This is the very last thing you do is cut this on a bandsaw. So this is out here. The 60 degree center is in here, and you're turning. This is all spindle turning.
sand and everything. And the very last thing to do when you're done is I have a little V block that sits in and I take it to my bandsaw and I just give it that turn and voila, you've got a little scoop. You can make those all kinds of sizes. Those are neat. You can do a couple together, make a little scoop set. They work great for jelly bean jars. They work great for sugar, anything like that. Coffee scoops. Mm -hmm. So, any cigar smokers here? It's the same because I love smoking cigars. For the person that smokes cigars or something like that, you can make ashtrays. This is a nice little ashtray. And what we did with this one, I just held this in place on, it's on here. But normally you take this out, but this is something that you grab with the jaws of a chuck and this spins and you just turn this little part here. This is a block of wood. You just, all it is a block of wood. Not a lot of verbal clutter to that one. These grooves, I took a round nose bit on my router table, put it up a little high, and all you do is, once this is in place, as you push it through, when you feel it come loose, that means it's in the bowl. Take it up, flip it over, voila. This took longer to mount on the lathe than it did to make. But it's a great little ashtray for the cigar smoker. Uh, if the cigar smoker likes to play golf, you make something like this. Little block of wood, pretty block of wood. You're going to drill a hole here with a lathe. This hole is one inch wide. Why one inch? A cigar ring gauge is in a 64th of an inch. So if you have a cigar that before ring gauge, it's one inch in diameter, and that's a pretty fat cigar. Most of the ones people like are between 49 and 55, 60 tops. So do a one inch hole, you're golden. Here, we drilled a one and one quarter inch hole on the drill press for the magnet. I imagine you're a golfer, you like to smoke cigars, you're in your golf cart, and you have time to take a shot. There we go. You put the cigar in there, go take your shot, come back in your golf cart, pick it up, and off you go. This takes, it takes longer for the finish to dry than it does to make this. So these are great little gifts. I mean, these are stocking stuffer type gifts. These are neat, neat little things. Uh, all my, those are all walnut oil finishes. A neat project, and all you're basically doing with this one is you're making a box, okay? So the box is gonna have a, um, a bottom, cut holes in the bottom with a Forstner bit, so the pack's underneath, the humidity can go up. And all you're doing with this is you're cutting 45s, you lay everything out and you tape these together with blue painter's tape. You put glue in the grooves and we you bring the whole thing together and, and tape it shut, that's your vice. You can make you can make a ton of this stuff really easy. You don't have to make it a humidor. You can make a traveler, traveling jewelry box. You can line it with flocking inside. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can put foam in there that you can put rings in or stuff to hold uh, necklaces for the ladies or bracelets. Um, you can take existing stuff and modify it with wood on the inside to make it kind of unique. I don't think you're going to find anything like this anywhere in any store for travel humidors. And the neat part about this is this is pressurized. So if I go into a low pressure area, instead of the pressure trying to force everything out, this has got a pressure relief valve, which means this can go in the, in the uh, uh, checked luggage for airlines because that area is, they don't pressurize that as much as they do uh, the cabin. Neat stuff. Or you can make a big humidor. We have humidor class here. This is what you make. Except the one we make now is a little bit smaller this way, a little bit deeper this way. And but this is a neat box. Now this one we put magnets in here so that these humidification systems can stay in place. This could be again, nice part of this is a box. It could be anything a box could be. You can make those little trays like I just showed you in the other one, and they'll fit in here. You can stack them inside. They could be jewelry boxes. They could be, I don't know, 
um, emergency box. It could be humidors, most anything. And these are made with a router table using what's called a lock miter bit. The lock miter bit is not only the strongest bit you can do when you're mitering, it is also guaranteed that this box to be a square. If the miter bit is tight, this has got to be square. So it, it really is not that hard to do. Here, what you're using, uh, basically this is bandsaw work, chop saw work, and um, a router table. So you aren't just stuck on lays. You can actually do other stuff besides that, but I, I like this. This top is a piece of walnut veneer on plywood. Thank you. So it's easy to do veneering on your projects. Uh, I, I just took a lot of effort to do that. I got veneer that had the glue already on it. So all I did was peel it, stick it on here, cut off the excess, and I was done. Took all the five minutes. So this is nice, nice stuff here. So other things we can do. Let's go back to boxes. This is Brian Noble Mark's box. When you take his little box classes is what you're going to come out with. And this is very simple. A simple little box. These boxes could be the present or can be what the present's inside. If you're going to make a knife, you can easily make a box like this to put the knife in. This be a little longer, a little narrower. Um, this is going to uh, be something neat that they can always use. You could put hinges on it. Most of these boxes are just like this. Remember, when you do a box, turn box, regular box, the lids have to come off very easily. You cannot have pressure fitted lids that when you press down, the air goes out because when you pick it up, the whole box will come up. So you've got to use two hands now to take it apart. Normally a box without hinges that you just pick up is like that. Um, it also helps if you could see what's in the thing. Okay, block of wood right over there. This came out of a block that looked just like this. So that's how this bowl sat in that block. So if you get a bunch of blocks of wood, you can have a ton of these. What can these for, will use be used for? Next to the front door, and you can throw your car keys in when you come home. You can have it next to your stove, and you can have it full of coarse salt. Coarse salt is a rock. It doesn't need to be covered. It has to be taken care of. It's coarse salt. It's a rock. Put it in your cooking. A lot of chefs have a salt box. They call them salt box, salt vaults. You can either have them open, like my wife does. She likes hers open, or I've made them where the top swivels out like this. And then you grab the salt and you swivel it out. And the only thing that does, it just keeps the dust down. Of course, if you're using a lot, you're cooking a lot, there is no dust. And if it is, it's boiled away. But great thing. So when you look at blocks of wood like this, start using your imagination. What's, what piece of wood is actually sitting in here? Uh, you can use nice, crazy little lines. You know what those lines are colored with? Wire. I burned them. Turn the lathe up real high, put the wire in there and hold it tight, and it burns that nice little black line. Does a black line fade? No, it's burnt. So it works, just little decorations. Here's this beautiful piece of wood that I turned, and just at the very end, because there was this inclusion here, this piece kicked out. So you can either throw it away, or I looked at it and said, that looks pretty neat just like that. So this is fun. This, I left it in there on purpose, because otherwise the only thing I can do now to fix this is fill some type of rosin or a, a putty or basically just throw it away. And this was too pretty to throw away. That's just gorgeous. So it's okay to have defects in your presence. It gives them character. This one, 
This one is a um, spray lacquer. Isn't that neat? Camel thorn. Oh, that's the name of the wood? Okay. Yeah, camel thorn. You know what camel thorn is? Here it's a bush, it's a pain in the butt. Camel thorn like this, this comes from the African plains. If you've ever seen that tree, you see the picture of the African plains and there's this one bloody tree with a big flat top on it, that's camel thorn. Why do they call it camel thorn? It's the camel's favorite food. They stick their face in there. The thorns don't bother them and the thorns are pretty spectacular. But uh, it's the only tree in the world that will send a tap root down over a hundred feet into the earth to find water. That's why those trees are where they are because they can get water where nobody else can. Uh, it's a really beautiful wood. I'll pass this around so you can see the figure on it. So now we've talked about the kitchen stuff. Kitchen stuff wouldn't be complete without bottle stoppers, wine bottle stoppers. And here you can go as simple, this is what I call my refrigerator bottle stopper. You can't lay the bottle of wine down with this, but when you put this in, the top of the bottle of wine is only right here. It's only this much pokes up, so you can put it standing up in the refrigerator and this won't hit the top of the refrigerator. Works great. This takes all the 20 minutes to make. And it, it's just really easy. It's an over, it goes over the top and sits right on down. Just make sure bottle stopper tops. Yes. No sharpies. If you didn't want it to invest all that time and effort, this takes five minutes. And all you're doing with this one is holding this in a lathe, three quarter inch Forstner bit until the end of the Forstner bit hits the side, take it off. Race pole in here, take this off, little epoxy around that, stick it in there, voila. Golf ball bottle stopper. You give this to a golfer, you think you gave him gold. So this is easy to do. This one, you don't see much of this one. I'm not really that big a fan of it. This is supposed to be for champagne or anything sparkly. Because when you put this in and you start to twist, these pull these things together and that silicon grabs that inside of the bottle and holds it hard. So technically, you can put this in champagne, give it a couple twists and it'll stay in place. The easiest thing to do is just drink all the champagne. And then you don't have to worry about this. But these are just some examples. Um, this little, I've been just doing what I just did, I made it so it wouldn't fit in the hole. There we go. Stuff for the kids. Kids love these tops. If you've ever given kids tops like this, there's all over the counters are dropping here, they're going underneath, they're going everywhere. Give them this to go with this because then they'll sit in one spot and they'll watch it turn in the bowl. It'll make you from going crazy. And they think it's a neat and sliced bread. If you give them two, then they'll do battling tops and they'll put them on top of each other and they think. So a little something like that. And then since I know it's gonna be kids, I use something that had lots of colors in it, okay? This is something that can go with it. These are really easy to make. And you can just spin those all day long. Other projects, okay, let's do stuff for there we go. Anybody like to do games that involve dice? If you do, make you one of these. This is a little dice shaker. Block it on the inside. So you put the dice in there. Yahtzee. So this is a simple thing. You can make this. It doesn't have to be for that. You don't have to flock it. You can leave it like that. You can make a drinking cup out of it. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. But just a simple little shape block the inside, and you got something that you use for family game night. Candle holders here. And these are really uh, simple to use. This is just a block of wood. Again, this involves a lathe. This makes you creative. This one 
It could be a, a soft egg for a really big egg, or you can use it as a, a candle holder. Just all kinds of different things that you've got that you could use now. Here you see that with this one, again, use the Forstner bit. You can always tell the Forstner bit because it got the little hole in the bottom. Just make a, a, a hourglass shape. And here we add a texture. And then I painted a green stain here. No stain here, just put the finish on. Of course, this is the burn marks. But you can make simple little holders like that. If you've got big candles that you like to do, just make that opening smaller, make that more uniform. You've seen uh, the famous candlesticks that look so thin in the center, you, you think they're gonna fall over and then come out again. Uh, this is along that except it's a little more chunky. Uh, I made this for that little octave candles that, you know, the power goes out, you could put a couple of these things out and off you go. I made this for my wife and she actually let me bring it, which I thought was really neat. This is satin wood. Okay. One of the things about woodworking is we make something we don't make it because it's cheaper. In most cases, it's not. It's probably cheaper to go out and buy a bowl. However, I doubt very seriously I'd ever find a bowl made out of just like this. We can bring stuff to the gift or the project that you just can't get in the store. And this satin one, when you look at it the right way, your eyes actually get lost in this. This is just a beautiful. And all this is that she keeps it right by the door and this is where she throws her keys. Thank God we have some place she can throw them because she doesn't remember where she puts another one. How many of you got iPads or iPhones? Two pieces of scrap. There you go. Now, there's programs that you can get uh, let's see where I put it. So now, when you travel, you've got your traveling alarm clock. Okay. Now, if you're sitting in your wood shop and, uh, you're doing something, oh, let's see, what can we do? Yeah, you're waiting, that's a good one, you're waiting for the epoxy to dry. Ooh, got a lot of comments. Okay, here's a demonstration for a shop smith mark seven but you set this down and now you've got something you could videos this is a piece of cake i mean all you need is basically a quarter inch stock or less the smallest i've done is one eighth this is a little between i think but here, table saw, 17 degrees. You need a type of blade that's going to give you a flat bottom. And uh, you can do two cuts with this. I just did two dado blades together to give me a quarter inch. So this is a quarter inch cut, so these knees are quarter inch right here. But anyway, that's it. The wood. My granddaughter got that, wrote her name on here so I wouldn't forget about it. And you glue this extra piece in here, you put your phone in here and just glue it so that it's not touching, but it's got a little space in there. And that way, if somebody else puts a phone in there, it's easy. I can't tell you how fast this is. Those, you, I throw those in the suitcase all the time. I mean, that's basically one pass with a little dado blade. If you didn't want to use a dado blade, use a combination to make two or three passes. And you can that way dial it into the phone. Works with iPads, works with iPhones, 
I'm sure it's going to work with the galaxies and all those others. Uh, simple, quick little project. And those are kind of neat because people don't see those. And if you use pretty wood or uh, another thing that's been really popular, and I'd like to show you one, but I don't have any more because what I'll do is I'll go to the golf shop and I'll get Virginia Tech ball markers or UVA ball markers and uh, drill a hole, epoxy them in place, and you think I give people gold. And they just put their phones in there. And that will fit, an iPad will fit in there, top or bottom, and it won't fall over. That, that's, that's a good, solid design. Yeah. So this is just more kind of to get you guys thinking about different stuff that you can do. Um, not to, oh. What is this? A Harry Potter magic wand. Take it out to here. Get rid of this and swish and flick. I've had college students, my nieces and nephews, fight for Harry Potter magic wands. Those are great little gifts. Um, you can even go wild and crazy and make little boxes and put little parchments there, telling them from wherever it is they buy magic wands from and what's in them. Ah, that Ollivander, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's uh, it's neat stuff. None of this stuff is difficult at all. This is, this is not hard. You've already got the tools in your shops unless you don't have a lathe, then you want to get one to do all, any of these. Um, the lathes is fun to I like lathes because I can get in there and get out and pretty quick. Um, nice gifts, huh? We got a guy in the pin turner, John Penberthy, who makes these uh, cigar blanks. And it's actually a real tobacco and a real uh, cigar band. And he casts it with acrylic. And then you buy it from him, and then you just turn your pen. So I turned this one. This one is Celtic knots, and I made the jigs to make those knots. And this is not hard, but these are really unique. You can't buy this in the store. Not like this. This is just a real beautiful piece of wood. And since this is a Wall Street, that's a certain length, a standardized length. That's that's. Not a whole lot of time and money invested in that, just press it together. I like to make these weed pots. You can see my little Christmas decoration. You can actually stick a decal on a lot of these things. So this is my little weed pot that I made as a Christmas gift. And then my wife takes it and she puts her pin in there on the desk and that's her pin holder. And it'll work with this one And you can make that hole, if you have a particular pin in mind, you make the hole bigger and smaller so it, it fits now. I like it to be towards me a little bit. This one, it won't. If you're thinking about pins, okay? The common pin is this type of pin. A lot of those out. This is a, um, a pin, but this is a metal um, thing that goes for phones or iPads or stuff like that. It's not the rubber one. This is metal. This will last much, much longer, it's much more uh, robust. So this is a good little nub that's used for that. If you're going to make fountain pens, okay, there's two things to know about fountain pens. One is that the gold in this is meant to make the metal soft, particularly the tip. And why that's important is we each hold these pins a certain way. And as you start using and writing with a fountain pen, you're going to wear it a certain way just for you. Okay? So you never, ever, 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 especially to a pen aficionado, write with their fountain pen. You don't let anybody write with your fountain pen. Because it's the more you use it, the smoother and easier it's going to work just for you. Okay, that's the one thing. Also, on a really good fountain pen, you'll never see this. A normal fountain pen is designed to be perfectly weighted when it's only like this. 
So you're going to put this on here and you set this down to the side. You never ever put the cap on. Now, if you're gonna give somebody who really likes pens a gift, just keep those two things in mind. Really love fountain pens and make it the pen you do so that the cap doesn't screw onto the back. For 99% of the people, they'll never know the difference. <laughs> and with the cheaper fountain pens, we'll have a steel tip. What does a steel tip mean? You ain't gonna wear it down and anybody can use them. But a good one, a good 14 karat gold tip is only one person. And that's whoever you give it to. They don't let you, because you're gonna, the wear patterns are gonna be different. Okay? Okay. Any questions about how I mean any of this stuff? This is all, like I said, these are, this particular one, nobody ever catches it, but this is not the same wood as this, okay? You can't remember this one. This one's Osage Orange. But when you get them together, and these bloody lines actually line up, It looks like the same piece of wood. So just because you don't have enough wood in a blank to do what you want to do, doesn't mean you can't find another piece of wood that looks just like it and duplicate. Any questions? This big one? Yeah. This big one was a class that they had here. It was $400 to take the class. And... Um, <coughs> Let's not grass this first name. Alex, <coughs> really smart, smart guy. He works a lot with, he, he probably forget more about bandsaws than I'll ever learn. And I know quite a bit about bandsaws. He's, he's a genius with them. This is a 3D cutting board. There's many different types of 3D cutting boards, okay? This is what he likes to make. And it's fairly, it looks complicated as hell. But when you understand how it comes together, it, it's not. You just got to be very precise. This is a very precise cutting. And that's why he gets those uh, band saws. He's a little lined up. You, you saw what that was like. But basically, you're going to make two sandwiches. And new sandwiches are going to be the materials. One is going to have this dark piece in the center. The other is going to have this dark brown piece in the center. Okay? And then the other two pieces on the sandwich are supposed to be the same color and they're supposed to be lighter and when you marry those together so now you're going to have this big panel all glued up you're going to start taking it through he used the band saw I used the table saw before 30 degrees and you're going to come out with length on the side yeah And then what you're going to do is you're going to take those sticks that all look like this and you know, I take them like the table saw or use the bandsaw and you're going to cut those edges. So you're going to cut the triangles off the ends and now you're going to have a regular 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Okay. From there you start, you're going to come out with this. Basically. We have the video on it um, from part. You can get it online or they can yeah. But it's, 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 when you look at it, it's like, oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. So it's not quite as precise. Yeah. So I'll put this around and you look at it, look gorgeous. And then you start looking at these little joints. Yeah, that one wasn't glued up very well. Yep. Which is why we have it here in the store showing it off. <laughs> Yeah. I, I have, as far as I heard, no, they haven't. Uh, for a cutting board like that, that you're actually going to cut on, you want to use a, I like a mineral oil wax combination. Slap it on and you're going to do it anytime, anytime you clean that with soap and water, dry it off, pull a bit more of that mineral wax and uh, oil on there. that stuff. The mineral oil keeps the wood from drying out. The wax keeps the mineral oil from evaporating as fast as it does. 
but just make sure you keep recharging and recharging it. You yeah. never want to put a film finish on that because if you do, you're going to have those white lines and it's yucky. And actually, what he showed us on the condition of the pyramid. And just let him in there. Did it in a bath of mineral oil for exactly 10 minutes? It will suck it right in. Seconds, it just pulls it all the way through. So you soak it for 10 minutes, and then you can do the future, which you're talking about mm -hmm. after that. That gets your mineral all the way through. It's amazing how much mineral oil that comes up. It's great. I have an end ring that I made mean, about six mm -hmm. inches. That's why you put it on. It's yep. And that's it's important to do that at least once a month. Yep. But there's yeah. It's it's gorgeous wood, but yeah, it, it's it's uh, it's not difficult, but it's very exacting, and you really have to have your stuff. I mean, right on the money. But if you do, it's basically just cutting and gluing. And if you go out and look around, you'll see other examples of 3D cutting boards where they... Uh, the, other, the other one is basically you're going to make diamonds. And when the diamonds are made, you've got like a walnut diamond, a maple diamond, and a cherry diamond. Then you start gluing them together so that there's uh, three together. And so you'll have this little shape, and then you start gluing those shapes together. When everything's all done and clamped it, then you cut everything straight to the right size that you want, and you got a 3D cutting board. There's a video that somebody's got out for these things that you need to be careful on. He told us it's a plain plastic pencil. So basically, using a rubber band to do the fire, but it doesn't compress the wood and get the fiber. So you've got that. Yeah. There's a lot of clamps. Uh, yep. So you can really get them. Once you start watching it, then it's just there. And Yep. You're yeah, absolutely correct. Any questions? Anything y'all like to see up here? Come on. Uh, but if I could just tell you anything, the projects are easy. It's not hard. You got to have some tools. Uh, if you're gluing wood to wood, that's the glue you want. It's a waterproof glue. It's not for underwater, but it, it, that's you use that for everything, and you'll be happy with a camper. If you need a hide glue. Hide glues are really neat in the fact that one, if you hit them with a hair dryer for long enough, they're released. So you can actually take stuff apart. Now, hide glue is the only glue that we have here that sticks to itself. So if you make a chair out of hide glue and then it starts to get wobbly, you can release it with the, the hair dryer put more high glue in there and clamp it back together, you don't have to clean the old glue out because it will stick to itself. It's the only one we got that does that. So this allows, and plus this is not what they call, um, uh, well, basically for the want of a better word, movable. If I took two pieces of wood together and I used this PVA glue and there was a lot of pressure on one piece going this way and one piece going this way, Basically, where you're going to see it, if you've got a leg here and something butt jointed to it with glue, put a lot of weight on over time, that glue is going to creep. This won't do, this won't budge an inch. Okay. This is high glue, but this is a modern high glue. The older high glue, you had to put in a pot and melt it. This is, that's pre done for you. So, but this has all the properties of high glue. It's a darker glue, it's got to be clamped. It doesn't tolerate water at all. If you put in a high human environment like a bathroom or the shower, you can expect that over time, whatever you made will start to fall apart. Okay. Anything else is perfect. It is not an outside glue. This is an outside glue. Why is that? Any glue that you or anything that you use for anything outside the wood is going to move, okay? We already know that this glue won't move. So when the wood moves, and it's going to move, 
over time, this will break. This will. Yep. Yep. I do. It's got good acoustic properties. This won't. This is this is, is outside glue. So this, when the wood moves, this will move with the wood. It won't break. Um, my favorite. For a lot of these, anything going to kitchen and bathrooms, these are my glues right there. These will hold up the kitchen and bathroom, anything. I'm talking about ammonia cleaners, alcohol-based cleaners, a high water environment, high humidity environment. This is what you want, these two. As far as the tools, you already know about the tools. Um, a lot of this stuff can be handmade. A lot of this stuff uses lathes. A lot of the stuff just uses saws and, uh, and uh, routers and stuff like that. And you should have access to all that stuff. Uh, the easiest ones to make to me are all the bowl ones. Uh, this, the only technical about this is you have to make sure that wherever that lip is in here, you leave enough distance so that at the top, you got this much of that center post up. If the wood is too thick, you'll never see the center post. So this will never go on. If it's too small, then these threads are going to stop and this is going to be real loose. So this is the measurements. This are critical, not as critical as the measurements in the cutting board, but pretty critical. This is probably one of the simplest things there is to do. A combination blade, which gives you a dado bottom, flat bottom, three quarters of an inch down. And then I measured, and I found that one side was about this much wider than the other side. Marked it, took it through the planer, two passes, bam, now these things are exactly perfect. Before I glued it in here, I took it to the router table, routed all the corners, and then I took it to the 12, my 12 inch disc sander, I ran to that corner, that corner, that corner, left this corner alone, these two, these two, then just Sat, took sandpaper and just sanded everything down, put the finish on. When the finish was dry, just forced this in here. Now, this is going to be, I'm going to take this apart. How I'm going to take it apart? It's easy. All you're going to do is put in something like this. And now we get a dead blow hammer and just hit this. Off she comes. Put the glue back on. Piece of cake. But I can tell you from personal experience, trying to line up these holes, you're not going to be happy. It, it, you can do it. Yeah, you ain't going to be happy. It's hard. And it doesn't add anything aesthetically. If I wanted to something like this to have little decorations here, basically what I do is I drill a small hole, I cut it to small size, I glue it in place, I sand it flush, and as far as you know, it goes all the way through. It's easier to do that way. How do you store that in your kitchen? This, you got to make a rack for this. You're going to make something. You do that, you need to make something to cover the end. Well, it, normally you're going to have a little something sitting on there that that's just sitting in just like this. If you're going to use it into a, dra uh, a tray, a drawer rather, then the drawer, you know how deep the drawer's got to be. But you're just going to set it in there. And then what you normally do is you have it a little bit thinner than this. So you grab this, up she comes, you do what you need to do, clean it off, put it right in. You can make a block like this that it sits in because the weight's going to hold it right in place. Straight in. Yeah, but this is not something you just throw in the silverware drawer. Because that, and that's not, I can make that edge much, much sharper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yipper. How do I know? Coming over here, that's what I had to do when I took this out. This was stuck on that thing. But that's also good too. Now, suppose you wanted to put that someplace and you didn't want to make that big thing. Get a one inch magnet, stick it in there, put that to the side, that's going to grab it, that's going to hold it in place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But normally that's, that's, yeah. Normally that's in a drawer and you just made something that just fits inside. Yeah. And remember, that's just held in place right now with just friction.
Uh, I've made those before, and again, that's a lathe. That's that's a technical lathe one because now you're trying to fit that container. And most people think it's technical down here. No, it's right at that lip, right getting that lip inside the underside of that container. Uh, it's not hard to do. It's just very technical. So what you're doing is you are basically when I did it, I. I turn you turn the outside first before you do anything else and then i've got that little lip and i i, I fit it in here take a little off fit it in here take a little, once i get that all done then i do everything else knowing that that it's going to come this way inside because that's the way the, the drink thing is inside now your sides are going to be flat you can do that too if you want to but just a regular old hole straight down is all you really need to do if you want to do in steps, you can actually do Forstner bits in steps, as long as that side line is in the steps you're going to, uh, Just a question of how heavy do you want it. The more wood you leave in there, the heavier that tumble is going to be. And after I did it and I looked at it, I went, yeah, that was nice. And I have no double sense. <laughs> well, every time I came here for a training on Thursday, I got a great big paramatic tumble, so all right. Any questions about anything we've went over?